Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and in this video, we're going to be exploring the absolute basics of HTML by writing our very first HTML file from scratch. So let's get started right now with the absolute most basic foundation you need to start making your own website. So to build our very first website, we're actually going to be using an application called a text editor. I'm going to be using Sublime Text. You can get Sublime Text for free online, and you can use it without registering it or without paying for it as long as you want. Another choice might be Atom, which you can get at atom.io. If you'd like to follow along, you can go ahead and grab Sublime Text. Now, you can work with Sublime Text on Windows, Mac, or Linux, so if you have any of those systems, you should be able to follow along just fine. Now, in addition, I'm going to go ahead and just create a folder. I'm just in my documents in a folder I have called Level Up Tuts. You can create this folder anywhere that's going to be reasonable for you, documents or a sites folder or something like that. I'm just going to name it first hyphen site. And now I'm going to simply drag this folder into Sublime Text. As you can see, what that does is it adds the folder right here. Now over here where it says folders, we can right click on this folder and select new file. Now we're gonna do command S or file save to create a new HTML file. Now HTML, which stands for Hypertext Markup Language, is the language for the structural web. Anytime you see a website, it's going to be using HTML. Now there are other languages like PHP and some JavaScript or server-side code that can be used to generate HTML, and that allows you to build more and more complex websites. However, HTML is what the browser reads to understand the structure of your website along with the content. So with most websites, the page that is immediately loaded when visiting is the index page. So let's go ahead and name our file index.html. Okay, so as you can see here, we have an HTML file here in the left, and we have this blinking cursor on the first line. Now, usually when working on websites, you're not going to be coding from scratch every single time. However, since this is your first HTML file or your first website, I think it's good to have a blank HTML page so we can actually get started and you can really understand what's going on. Now, the first thing we want to do is type a less than sign and then exclamation point and then the words doc type with the space after it. Then we're going to say HTML. And then we're going to close that with a greater than sign. Now this less than sign and then greater than sign is something you're going to see very frequently in HTML. In fact, this is how you define what's called an element. Now there's lots of elements in HTML and with the addition of HTML5, uh, which is the latest version of HTML, there's even more. Now these things allow you to do all sorts of stuff, mostly just define your content, such as headings, paragraphs, links to other pages, and now even things like video and audio files. So after our initial doc type statement, which just lets the browser know that this is an HTML document, and it lets it know that it's using the latest version of HTML5. If you've seen HTML before and the doc type looks a little bit different or more complex, it's most likely using an older version of HTML. Okay, let's hit enter and add a new element here, and this element is going to be HTML. Now we can close that like so. Now, unlike the doc type statement here, this element actually needs to be closed. Now, everything that's contained within this HTML tag right here will be a part of this element. So let's go ahead and type less than. Now, simply by just hitting the forward slash key, Sublime Text Auto completes that for you to type forward slash HTML and then close that out. Let's put this on its own line because everything we're typing in our HTML document is going to be contained between these two tags. So next we have the head element, which we can type just by typing less than head and close it off with a greater than. And just like the HTML element, we need this to be closed like so. Let's go ahead and create space in here. Now the head of your HTML document is going to contain a bunch of information and links to files for your site. Nothing in the head here is actually going to show up when you load this page. For instance, let's have a title tag. So we can say title and let's close that as well. And in our title, we can say 
our first website like so. Now let's actually open this HTML file in your browser. So by selecting this file and clicking reveal in finder, or just by browsing to this file in your my computer or my files or whatever, you can just drag this file into your web browser. Now in these videos, I'm gonna be using Google Chrome and I would suggest you do the same. You don't have to use Chrome to browse the internet normally if you don't like. However, Chrome has the best options for developer tools, although Firefox is a close second. So now we have this file open. You can see instead of a normal URL up here, it's actually linking to the file itself and we don't have anything output on the page. It just says our first website at the top. If you notice, the title of your page corresponds with what's in the tab of the browser here. Now a nice way to see the HTML for this page is to click on it and select view page source. This is gonna open up a new tab that shows you directly the HTML as it corresponds with what we're typing. So you can really go to any website. Let's head to just google.com we can right click and say view page source. Now, Google is going to be quite a bit different. You may not recognize all of this stuff because it's a some higher level JavaScript code. However, we do see our doc type HTML along with an HTML tag. And if you look closely in here, you'll even see a title tag somewhere. So if you scroll down here, yeah, it's going to be a lot of JavaScript and a lot of craziness. However, you can really check out the source on any web page that exists. Okay, let's head back to our first website. Let's get something on the screen here. So in addition to title, we can have tags that are meta. Now the meta tag is sort of different because in your head, you can have as many of these as you'd like and they all have sort of different functionality. So for this one, we're going to say char set is equal to UTF-8. Now UTF-8 is the encoding of the text on this website. Now we're gonna close that off with a greater than sign. In addition, these meta tags don't need to be closed, so we don't need to have a forward slash meta after it. Now there's a whole bunch of different meta tags which we'll cover in another video, but for now we'll just leave this UTF-8. We can also link files in our head. We can link CSS files which control how your website looks, or JavaScript files which control interactivity in your website. Okay, so let's get out of the head for a little bit and we're going to go into what you would expect. If we have a head, we must also have a body. So we have less than and then body. And again, body is a tag that you need to close out. So like so, everything that's in your body is most likely going to get displayed on your website. Now there are exceptions. We can link JavaScript files from your body as well and some comments in your code that are only displayed for the person editing the code and not the website itself. We can write our first comment simply by doing the less than exclamation point and then two hyphens. This is a comment, okay? And now we wrap that up by doing two hyphens and then the greater than sign. Let's head to our browser for a second and refresh. You can see we still see nothing. However, when we refresh the index.html, you do see the this is a comment in your body. Now, let's go ahead and add a header tag. Now, a heading tag is going to be what defines a heading on your website, and headings are special because search engines like Google specifically pay attention to headers to know what your page is about. For instance, if we were to say h1 and then have it like that, we could say, our first website. Now we can close it off by doing less than and then hitting the forward slash. So now a tag like h1 defines this as the first level heading. A first level heading holds most importance over all your headings on your entire website. Now there's only six levels of headings. However, some of them have a very specific purpose. For instance, the h1 should be saying exactly what this page is. In fact, you can only have one h1 per page. Keep in mind that the browser will let you have multiple H1s, but it's a rule that you should really be using one H1 just so that the search engine always knows what each page of your website is doing exactly. So now if we save this file, we come to our browser and we refresh, you can see the source, we have our first website in the tag there, and if we refresh our actual document here, you can see in nice bold text, it says our first website. And in addition to an H tag, we can also have a paragraph tag. So a paragraph is like you would expect, just any standard paragraph. So we can do less than P, and then we need to close this one as well. Now in between a paragraph text, we can say 
our first text, okay? Now when we head back to our browser, the font size is quite a bit smaller and there's even some default margin between these two, right? It's not just stacking them on top of each other. We'll get into that a little bit more once we talk about what's going on with CSS. So we now have our very first HTML file. We wrote it by hand and it's showing up in our browser. It's absolutely nothing fancy or spectacular, but if this is your first website, this is a pretty good accomplishment. So because we have lots to go over in the next video, we're gonna give you a brief introduction into CSS and what it is and why you need it in your website. And then later on, get into some more advanced CSS topics. As always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video, hit us up at Twitter or Facebook at Level Up Tutorials. We love to hear from you. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.